Previously on PowerPoint West Tutorials, we created a password system where you can specify your own username and password and then log in with that password. If you get it correct, you go to the desktop. If not, well, you then you get a message box saying you got it wrong. However, we're going to be moving on and making significant headway. We're going to actually create the desktop, the um, the layout of the operating system, how you navigate it and everything to do with that. And it's going to be quite a task, so let's start. In the previous episodes of how to make a PowerPoint OS, I'll be showing you how to do something and you just follow along. But it, in this case, it requires a bit of creative input. So we're going to be doing a little bit of theory work. So it's not going to be that long and we're just going to show you how to design a shell. So the kernel in the real operating system is the bare bones of the operating system. And it kind of works as not the BIOS, not to be confused with BIOS, which is basic input output system, which handles your keyboard. Um, and mouse inputs and puts into the operating system, but it controls the operating system on a base level, as in the processes and things like that. Now, um, of course, PowerPoint OS is not at that level at all. Um, you can make a PowerPoint OS as advanced as that, but in this case, uh, base OS is supposed to be basic and easy to make, so instead of um, implementing such a thing, we're going to change the context of the word kernel. In this time, it's going to be referring to the actual master UI. Think of it as the, um, the way you can navigate your operating system, going from the desktop to the applications to the app um to the menus and everything like that so we're going to first of all have a few examples of how you would put this into format so for example let's say windows windows you have at the bottom you have the taskbar you have the start button you have the start menu and that's in the desktop format and when you're in an application you have the window controls and menus both at the top which are attached to the application and at the bottom you still have the taskbar start menu and start button overlaid on top uh, for macOS, however, you have the menu bar and a dock uh, in desktop mode, and in an application mode, you have the menu bar that ho hosts all the menus, the dock at the bottom, but you have the window controls attached to the application, always. Now, designing a kernel must balance originality, design, and usability as much as possible. So, for example, let's take a look at some custom kernels. So, this one is I, is the one I created for Orbit OS. You have the program indicator at the top. You have the navigation bar, and the navigation bar is split into two sections. The first bit is mode. So, at the side, you have the navigation buttons, such as uh, the the applications, quick menu, etc. And at the side, you have the menus, things like the workflow editor and the clipboards. So, um, and when you're in an application, you always have the same. Um, thing overlaid except the window controls aren't attached to the application themselves they are put inside the program indicator and all the menus are inside the application so it differs a lot from those two when you put it into this simplified diagram so for base OS let's design the kernel so first of all we need to actually draw a simple UI diagram below so that's the basic uh, diagram you have two instances you can have a desktop and an application and you literally just draw wallpaper and application now, a basic interface would entail full screen apps, except for two controls on the right, which would be exit and apps, because we need to access the apps and we need to exit to the desktop. So we're going to add those in. And in desktop mode, just like mobile operating systems, an applications icon on the desktop would allow for simplicity, because well, people who use phones, which is quite a lot of people, would instantly recognize that that means that it's the applications and it doesn't need to be conveyed through text, which is usually slower. So we're going to add that. And now we've designed our blueprint, it's time to actually build it. Now, if you recall, I said that logging in takes you to the desktop, so this slide, slide 7 in our case, will be used as the desktop. Now, to build the actual kernel, all we need to do is utilize these elements once again, but in the format of you have the taskbar, start and start things. But, however, these actually don't apply due to my um, newly found um, design, so I'm going to change it up a little bit. So, let's see how this goes.
When logged in, the user will be greeted with this system. You have the applications tray icon, and when it's toggled, you have the applications tray right here. And then in the application, you have the close and apps buttons, as well as the options being in separate dialogues, so the interface doesn't get too cluttered, and it's easy to navigate. Now, the last thing to do is to wire everything up. So, if you have worked with PowerPoint OS before, you may recall you can't actually apply an action or hyperlink to one whole group of objects. Instead, I could only apply it to this background object, for example. But that means if you happen to click on one of these, um, well, their hitboxes would get in the way of this one and you wouldn't be able to go to the uh, place that you want to, so it will be a bit tricky to use. So to bypass that, all you need to do is duplicate the background. And to do that, we need to go Control D, and then we need to align that with the original background. Now, instead of obscuring it, we're going to have it a solid fill, but as 100% transparency, which means you can't see it at all. So there's no real point in it, except for to override all the other hitboxes of all these. So we go to app to action, sorry, we go to hyperlink to slide, and I'm going to go to slide 8 because that's a slide for the application tree. And so if I hit F5 or hit shift plus F5, if I press it, it will toggle that. Now on here, we just do the same thing, but instead of using going back to the desktop, I thought it would be a good idea to go back to the original slide that you were on, because if you wanted to go to apps and think, well, actually, I want to cancel this, it would be logical that you go back to what you were doing. And there is a function for that. So you go, as I did before, no fill, solid, solid fill, 100% transparency, and then you go to the hyperlink to, but instead of going to slide, custom slide, you go to last slide viewed, which is right there. So if I put this into action, I go like that, and it will take me back to the previous slide. Now um, on here, we're going to do wire these up. Now because these are single objects, we don't need to use the same um, technique that we used before, so we'll just go straight to slide eight. But watch what happens here. So if I hit F, uh, shift plus F5 and go to apps, it um, goes to the app straight, and if I press it again, it takes me back to Notepad, where I was before. And then to go to the desktop, if you want to go to the desktop, then all we need to do is just press close. So you go up hyperlink to slide uh, 7, which would be the desktop. So now, if you happen to go to apps, but you say, hang on, I want to go back to the desktop, all you need to do is press close, and there's a way to get to the desktop. So, now that's all wired up, we are finished. And now it's time for the review of what we've done so far. If you enjoyed this video you can kindly like, comment or subscribe and on the screen is the other content there is on this channel as well as a discord server link which you can join um, that's usually in the description. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.